I'm kind of curious. You guys want to do this? So, Mr. Ballin? Most DC animated stuff's pretty good, unlike the live action movies. I've heard that, yeah. Today, we're going to. Is this the next trend? People jumping into acid? We're going to look at it. Can you fart so hard your balls explode? Balloon. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did that make me laugh? Balloon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Balloon. Okay. Maybe he's, you know, actually, he sound, no, it's sick. I think he looks like he's sick. He kind of sounds nasally. She, along with her husband and some of her influencer, Russian. In early 2020, a very popular Russian Instagram influencer named Ekaterina Dedenko was getting ready to celebrate her 29th birthday. She, along with her husband and some of her influencer friends, were planning to enjoy the occasion at a popular spa in Moscow, Russia. The group rented out a private section of the spa that included a steam room and a small indoor pool. And then once the reservations were made, Dedenko and all of our influencer friends began eagerly talking about how excited they were about this party Russia? on their it's various always Russia. accounts. When the day finally came, February 28th, which was Dedenko's birthday, Dedenko, her husband, and the eight oh other God, people it was her invited, birthday. they all descended on this spa. So they go inside, they go back to their private area, and it's great. There's food, there's alcohol, there's music. They're jumping. What year is this? What kind of terrible picture is that? What? This looks like a joke. Into the pool is this and supposed to be Instagram? Getting in the hot tub and everyone's just having a great time. Everyone's taking pictures and filming and live What are these pictures? I mean, it's really going as well as it possibly could be. And then at some point, Dedenko's husband signals the rest of the group, minus Dedenko, and they all begin to pull out these white hazardous materials suits. Imagine what you would see in a movie if there was some huge chemical leak, a full body white suit with a mask. And so they're all putting on these hazmat suits and they give one to Dedenko who puts it on as well. And they tell her this is part of her big surprise. Now it's unclear if Dedenko actually did. Is her big surprise IRL among us? Is that the surprise? Among us in real life. Sus. Sus. If anyone knows that, I'm sorry. If anyone knows that song, I'm genuinely sorry. Didn't know what was going to happen next, or if she's just pretending to be surprised because it would do better on social media because this is all being filmed and she's an influencer. But either way, she puts on wowza. her hazmat suit, and once everyone has their suits it's on, it's out. Why I say wowza? What's out? I messed up my own catchphrase. Cooler, like you would bring to a picnic, and he placed it right on the edge of the pool. When he opened the lid, the crowd all gasped and laughed and smiled and filmed as these huge clouds of smoke or steam came pouring out of it. Ha 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 ha! Why? What is happening? Are they? Are they what are they doing? What? Here's your birthday surprise. Fucking gasoline. We pour it in the water. We're going to jump in with hazmat suits. Dry ice. Is that it? What? What it was was roughly 55 pounds of dry ice. Oh, what? Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide. It's commonly used for things like refrigerating perishable goods for long periods of time because dry ice stays cold for a really long time. Also, because of the huge white gas clouds that come off of dry ice, it's also very commonly used as a sort of spooky decoration because you have these very cool white clouds going everywhere. And in fact, that's what Tadenko's husband planned to use this dry ice for. He was going to dump it into the pool and create those big white gas clouds all over the pool. The reason they call Why? it dry ice is because as it starts to heat up, it doesn't melt into a liquid state the way frozen water does. Instead, it goes directly from a solid state to a gas state. Dry ice is considered to be quite hazardous if it's handled inappropriately. And while these partygoers... Why? Here's your surprise. We made it all. Smoke. Just get a smoke machine. What? Or a fog machine. Why? What idiots? What? Surprise. What kind of... What, also, what kind of birthday gift is that? 
Also, they're all wearing hazmat suits, so they know it's dangerous. This is stupid. For the gram? You think it was just for the gram? That That's pretty good clickbait. Pretty good click, clickbait. I'll give you that. They hazmat suits on. It's unlikely they were actually <laughs> wearing them for safety. It's far more likely they were wearing them because it would look Among good us. on social media and would kind of hype up the stunt. Among us! To do. And so Among after us. the dry ice was revealed inside of this cooler, Tadenko's husband and another of the party goers grabbed the sides of the cooler and they dumped its contents directly into the water. And as soon as the dry ice hit the water, it rapidly began to warm up, which caused a massive, almost explosion of carbon dioxide gas to completely fill the lower half oh, of the no. room. Now, none of the party goers are even a little bit phased by what's happening. They don't realize how dangerous this actually is. And so they're just filming and laughing and kind of thinking this is so funny. And then Dedenko's husband actually leaps through the cloud into the water and kind of disappears below. And then shortly after, after that, two other party goers would also leap into the pool. One of the main reasons dry ice is considered to be so hazardous if uh, handled idiots. inappropriately is because dry ice emits that carbon dioxide gas, which at <clears throat> high concentration. You know what's funny, chat? This made me think of this because uh, ignorance can cause a lot of damage. When I was uh, work, it was like my first job I've ever had. Uh, I, I don't remember. I remember, like, that they told me to pour these liquids into the mop bucket and then water and then mop. But I didn't remember which liquid it was. So I poured liquids in there because they, they grabbed two bottles and they poured it in there. So I, pour, I grabbed two bottles, poured it in there. It started smoking. It started smoking and everyone started coughing. And I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> like, I was like, I was panicking. I was like, what did I do? And then I took it out back and poured it out. Chlorine gas, is that what it was? Yeah, I got fired from that job. <laughs> I don't know if it was because of that or not. May have been bleach and ammonia. Yeah. It's not my fault. They didn't train me right. They literally just told me, hey, pour these things in there. And they were all unmarked. It's like, what? what I'm, 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 I'm 15 years old. I'm literally 15. I don't know. It's my first job, okay? <laughs> my first job. Unmarked, yeah. It, it, like, it had, no, it, it had, like, you know, all, like, the hazardous material marks on it but i didn't know what it was it didn't say like bleach or ammonia on it it's just like you know concentrations will that 30 years ago fuck you pork chop oxygen so imagine if you're in a very small room that has very poor ventilation <clears throat> if you had lots of carbon dioxide in there you would suffocate and so this indoor pool was a small confined space with poor ventilation. And so the seven people on the pool deck, shortly after this dry ice has been tossed into the pool, they started to realize it was really hard to breathe because the oxygen was basically being sucked out of the room. Oh God. And so they were able to turn and actually run out of the pool deck before Did they it was die? too late. Meanwhile, Dodenko's husband and the other two people who leapt into the pool, when they came back to the surface, they breathed in thinking they would be breathing in oxygen, oh. but instead they breathed in an entire lungful of carbon dioxide, oh. which in addition to displacing oxygen at higher concentrations inside of confined spaces with poor ventilation, it is also poisonous at higher concentrations inside of confined spaces with poor ventilation. And so when the three Are of they them gonna surfaced, die? they breathed in this poisonous gas, which caused two of them to immediately pass out and then just die, while the third, Dedenko's husband, he managed to stay conscious enough that he was able to climb barely out of the pool and he tried to get to the door, but he couldn't get out in time. Eventually, he was pulled out and rushed to the hospital, but he would later die, not only from carbon dioxide poisoning, but also from having gone without oxygen for as long as he had. Why? Oh, they did it for the gram. This is what happens when you do it for the gram, chat. This is what happens when you do it for the gram. <clears throat> On Saturday, September 30th, 2017, a staff member at a North Wales country club noticed water leaking out of the bottom of an outside wall of one of their many bungalows. 
said I stole Wazow from him. Dude, fuck off, dude. Like the chair, that that's not his catchphrase. You know you 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 wanna know the catchphrase for my chair is? These bungalows, which were generally just vacation rentals, were single-story white structures situated up on this beautiful green hillside. The staff member, after seeing this leak, they just turn around and go back to the front office and they tell their boss about it. And then shortly after, two maintenance workers were sent out to check on this leak. And so these two workers, they go over to this bungalow and they knock on the front door. But after a while, when no one comes to the door, they pull out their master key and they begin to turn the lock. And as they do that, they yell out just in case, hey, you know, we're here just to check on a leak. We have to come in. You know, it's a potential emergency. And so they open up the door, they swing it open and no one comes to the door. It's still silent. And they're looking into this property. And what they see is on the left from their perspective is a kitchen and on their right is a living room. It was basically one big room that had been designated for two distinct functions. And so they yelled out again into this bungalow, Check, hey, get you know, we're coming inside, we're just checking on this leak. And then they just walked straight across past the living room and past the kitchen to the back of this property where they reached a door. And this door led into a bedroom and this door was shut. And so just as a precaution, uh -oh. they knocked on the bedroom door, but nobody came to the door again. So they opened up the bedroom door and they looked into this room. And on the right side of the room, tucked up against the right wall, were two twin beds where the head of each bed was tucked this one up is against sad. the wall. And then in the middle of the room, at the base of these two beds, was a pile of unopened luggage. And so to the two maintenance workers, this told them that someone clearly was staying in this bungalow. Either they had just arrived or they were getting ready to leave, but apparently they were not there right now. And so the workers walked around the luggage and around the two beds. So they walked on the left side of the room, all the way to the back where there was another closed door and it went into the bathroom. Oh, no. And based on where the leak had been coming out of the <clears throat> structure, they believed it would be coming from this particular bathroom. Oh, no. And so again, they get up to this door and they knock on it because, you know, they want to make sure no one's in there but there's more silence. And so they open up the bathroom and right away they see water all over the bathroom floor. But as they scan around the bathroom, they look at the sink, they look at the shower, the toilet, none of them are overflowing or running. So it was not any of the usual suspects that had caused this leak. However, there was one other area in the bathroom that could have caused a water leak, and that was the airing cupboard. An airing cupboard is typically where you keep a hot water heater. It's basically like a walk-in closet where the majority of the space is taken up by this heater. And also generally people put in shelves in front of the heater what? to store their linens and towels I don't and like that this. sort of thing. And in this bungalow, the airing like cupboard this. had its own door and it was right in the bathroom. And this door to the airing cupboard was right to the left of the door that led into I don't the like this from the bedroom. I don't so like this. two workers, they reached over and they opened the door that led into this airing cupboard. And as soon as it swung in, they could tell right away where the leak was coming from and they could tell right away they had a much, much bigger problem. Seven days earlier, 60-year-old former policewoman, Mary Isherwood, arrived at the <clears throat> North Wales Country Club. She and her ex-husband had for a long time owned one of these bungalows. Stop saying people soup, okay? Stop. However, they almost <laughs> never stayed. God, they basically God, used stop. it as an income property, renting it out <clears throat> to vacation goers but they had recently decided that they wanted to actually sell the property. And so before the sale became final, Mary had told her ex-husband that she just wanted to go and spend a week actually enjoying the property and actually take a vacation there. And so originally she and some friends were gonna go to this bungalow and spend a week there, but right before they were going to leave, Mary's friends all said they couldn't make it. And so Mary decided she would just go on her own. And so Mary arrives at this country club. It's late at night when she gets there. She gets to the bungalow. She puts her luggage down in her bedroom. And then instead of just kind of getting settled in and going to sleep, she decides she's gonna go exercise. Mary was incredibly fit and healthy. She loved playing golf and running and exercising in general. And she knew the club had a pool. And so she reached into her luggage and she just pulled out a bathing suit. She switched into that. And then she went down to the pool and did some lap swimming. Okay. After that, she came back to her room where she took a shower and then she climbed in bed without any clothes on. That was just how Mary liked to sleep. Okay. And at some point in the middle of the night, Mary woke up to go use the bathroom. And so she hopped out of her twin bed. She walked around to the 
the door that led into the bathroom. She went inside, she did her business. And then afterwards, as she was attempting to go back into her bedroom, she accidentally grabbed the door handle of the airing cupboard, which was right to the left of the door leading back to her bedroom. She opened it up, it swung inward. She stepped into the airing cupboard, which was totally pitch black. And as she walked in, she might've bumped into the shelves or realized, you know, this was the wrong turn. But as soon as this happened, the door behind her had actually shut. And so she's inside of this tiny airing cupboard realizing, okay, this is not where I need to go. I've made a silly mistake. She turned around to grab the door handle to open the airing cupboard back up again. But when she grabbed the knob, it disintegrated in her hands. It broke into multiple parts. And fell to the ground. Now, the space she is in is pitch black. She has no way of knowing which parts go where for this doorknob. And so by touch, she reached down and she grabbed all these pieces and she probably tried to put them together and put it back on this door to try to get it open, but she just couldn't do it. And so eventually, Mary would have realized this is a pretty serious situation. She was staying at this bungalow by herself and she was oh, not no. expected to check out for another week. So oh, no one was going no. to be checking on her. And without this doorknob, she could not open this closet door. It was a hard wooden door. The locking mechanism was solid. There was just no way to open it without this <clears throat> doorknob. And so Mary began banging on the door and screaming out for help, but her bungalow was not actually connected to any other structures. It was a standalone. And so her voice did not carry very far and the banging sounds she was making, those also did not carry very far. And so no one heard her. And so after several hours, she's just standing in this closet, probably thinking to herself, how in the world did I get myself in this position? But after the initial shock of this totally bizarre situation she was in had worn off, she decided to act. And so she turned away from the door and she faced towards the back of this closet. She would have been face to face with a row of shelves, but she wouldn't have been able to see the shelves because it was totally dark. And then Stop beyond saying the shelves, that, farther Chad. into the closet Stop. was the actual hot water heater. Oh my God. There was no wall behind the shelves. Basically there was a space behind the shelves where this heater was. And so Mary grabbed one of these shelves and she managed to break it off the wall. And then she turned around and used this piece of wood and tried to smash the door, but very quickly realized that was just gonna do nothing. However, she began striking the wall right next to the door and she realized she could break through the drywall. She was starting to kind of burrow a hole. And so maybe she thought to herself, if I can just build a hole big enough right next to the door, I can reach through the hole and maybe open this cupboard from the outside. And so she began using the shelf to smash this wall and she's burrowing as fast as she can, but the progress must have been very, very slow because she decides she needs a different tool. So she turns back around, so she's facing the shelves again, and she breaks down a few more shelves to clear a path to get to the water heater. And then once she could step past the shelves, once there was Dude, a path, I'm stressing she out, got bro. right in front I'm of this stressing. water heater, and then by touch began feeling around for any pipes extending off of the heater. And when she found one, she got a good grip of it, and she began- No! Why? Oh God, she was doing fine. She was doing fine with the shelves. Why? Oh, why, bro? Like at first, everything seemed like, oh, this is just an unlucky situation. Like she died from, you know, just being unlucky. Why would you, why would you rip off a pipe? From a water heater? Wood is not strong enough. Not a metal pipe isn't going to be strong enough either. Like genuinely, I feel like she could have gotten out of there if she just kept working at it. Fight or flight, homie. Fighting isn't ripping off a pipe from a water heater. That's not fighting. and tugging on it until she managed to rip a piece She couldn't see. She knew it was a pipe. She knew it was a pipe. She, how do you not know that you're ripping off a pipe? The pipe off of the hot water heater. 
Now, as soon as she did that, she now had a pipe that was a far better tool for burrowing and creating this hole in the wall. However, as soon as that pipe broke off, cold water began leaking out of this hot water heater, the water that had not been heated yet. And it was being sprayed all over the inside of this cupboard. Now, this was a very small space, and so there was no way for Mary to get cold out water? from under this cold water. And so it was a shocking and probably very painful experience, but she now had her tool and figured, okay, you know, this is awful, but I'll just use this tool, I'll burrow this hole, I'll get this cupboard open, <clears throat> and I'll get out of here. And so with the water raining down on her, Mary used her new piece of pipe and began digging and burrowing at that spot right next to the door. But after a while, probably several hours, she struck a brick wall. There was no way she could actually oh, push through no! this wall and reach around and open the cupboard door. There was nothing she could do. It was a dead end. And so totally devastated and probably very... To be fair, like, to be honest, I feel like she should have tried to burrow the door, not the wall. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Who who knows? I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to hindsight her. But it from all the energy she used to burrow this hole, she stopped. She's still getting rained down on by all this freezing cold water. And instead of just totally giving up, she just turned and faced the wall that was leading into her bedroom. And she began digging again, using this tool all over again to now dig a new Maybe the hole hinges? On this That's other. true. True. Not wrong. Actually, not a wait. No, hinges wouldn't be on that side. The wall, most likely hoping that she could literally burrow a hole big enough that she could actually crawl through into her bedroom and escape. And so after several more hours of digging as fast and as hard as she could, while also periodically banging on the door and screaming out for help, she did eventually push through into her bedroom. However, in a cruel twist of fate, when she did finally poke through this wall, there was no bricks in the way, she hit what felt like another dead end. But in fact, what it was, was a picture frame with a glass cover across it had been screwed onto the wall in her bedroom. Oh. And this painting was right over where she was digging this hole. And so in her totally exhausted and panicked and saddened and scared state, she hits the back of this painting. And again, it's pitch black and she's feeling through the hole most likely and she's touching this hard back of this painting. And she's realizing, oh my goodness, I've hit another dead end. There's oh, man. nowhere for me to go. Even though in reality, she could have very easily just broken through that frame and then maybe made the hole a little bit bigger and then she could have squeezed through it and escaped. Oh. But she didn't know that. And so she eventually just slouched to the ground and accepted her fate. Six days later, when those two maintenance workers opened the airing cupboard door, they found Mary's body slumped up against the wall inside this closet. She had died of hypothermia. It would turn out other residents of the other bungalows nearby heard banging coming from this bungalow on Saturday night, the night that Mary actually got stuck. And then they also heard the banging the following morning on Sunday morning but none of the other residents reported it because they believed it was just construction or some other maintenance work. How to be fair, like I know people are like, why wouldn't they go look? But at the same time, it's like, I feel like, I feel like you would have done the same thing. Like, you know, like when you hear random banging, you're not going to think, oh, someone's trapped in a room, you know? If you heard help, yeah, but I mean, she probably wasn't loud enough. However, there was one couple staying in one of the nearby bungalows that thought there was something off about this banging. And they told each other, if the banging persists past 5 p.m. on Sunday, so that's the day after Mary got stuck, this couple told each other that if it continues past 5 p.m., we'll report it. But as it happened, Mary stopped banging on the walls and yelled. What is that? Oh, 5 p.m. on Sunday. If it does not continue, it's like 4.59 and then it stops. Well, I guess we can't check because it's it's past 5 p.m. on Sunday. What? On Sunday. On Sunday. Well, I don't know. It might be something that uh, could be wrong. But if it does not go past 5 p.m. on Sunday, then it's fine. It must just be something else.
yelling for help right around 5 p.m. on Sunday. And so this couple, right as they're getting ready to go tell the front desk, the banging stopped, and so they stopped worrying about it. It's unclear how long Mary survived after she stopped banging around 5 p.m. on Sunday. It could have been minutes, it could have been hours, it could have been days. Mary's family would ultimately sue the country club for negligence. However, the outcomes of this case have not been made public. They really had to wait until Sunday. Wow. How'd she die? Hypothermia. I mean, I like hypothermia is pretty bad to be honest. But like, at least she didn't get boiled alive. I thought it was gonna be like she was gonna literally just have blaring hot water, and she'd like boil alive or some shit. That's what I was nervous about. They, On see, July 30th, so all the idiots saying Mary Soup. Yeah. Was never Mary Soup. 13, 56 year old Roger Miro grabbed a bag of trash from his apartment and then walked this out. This one's kind of hall. fucked, dude. They're all fucked. Let's be real. He turned right and walked down the hall <laughs> until he reached the trash chute, which was right on the side of Mary the wall. Popsicle. He Stop! It, up. it was like a mailbox. He opened it up. He dropped his trash bag inside. He closed the trash chute and then walked back to his apartment. When he got back inside, he instinctively reached down to his right pocket to grab his cell phone, but it wasn't there. So he grabbed his left pocket, wasn't oh, there either. No. He checked his back pockets, he's fishing around, and he realizes he doesn't have his phone. So he figures, okay, I must have put it down somewhere in my apartment. Now, Roger was legally blind, so it made looking for small things in his apartment quite difficult. But nonetheless, he began looking all over his apartment for his phone. He started in the kitchen, he looked all over the place, checked all the surfaces, no cell phone. He went to the living room, to the bedroom, to the bathroom, but there was no cell phone. Oh, and so Roger no. thought maybe when he walked to the trash chute, he might have dropped the phone in the hallway. And so he left his apartment, he turned right, and he walked along, retracing his footsteps all the way to the trash chute. But all along the way, there was no phone on the ground. And so as he's standing in front of the opening to this trash chute, he thinks to himself, 4 a.m., but I want to watch more. I no sleep for you. Accidentally put my phone in the trash bag that I have now just dropped down this trash chute. And so as Roger is standing there wondering what he's supposed to do. When I was a kid, my mom, my, my dad told me that my... Wait, what? When I was a kid, my dad told me my mom fell down the garbage chute in our apartment, and because she worked nights, I literally didn't see her for hours. That's mean. Yeah, that's mean. That's scared. <laughs> Why would you say that to your kid? I'm confused, to be honest. His dad said it to him to scare him. to do one of his neighbors walked out into the hall and looked down and saw roger standing there kind of inquisitively looking at this opening to the trash chute and they asked roger you know you know what's going on and roger explained the whole phone situation and the neighbor said well you know hey why don't you go down to the first floor and ask the manager if you can get the key to the trash room on the first floor where all the trash goes why wouldn't he's blind he's blind Hey, blind guy, why don't you ask the manager for a key to the trash room and do it yourself? He's fucking blind. Get the manager to do it. Why don't you do it? What? And so Roger said, thank you very much. He turned and made his way to the elevator and the neighbor went back inside of his apartment. Roger went down to the first floor. He went to the manager's office. He Dude, I can't, I cannot wait because that person who told him to go talk to the manager must feel like a complete ass. Hey, it's me. I'm the glasses guy. I'm back. Let's go. Let's watch the video. Door, and when the door opened, the manager was obviously very busy with something. And Roger would say, hey, you know, I'm just looking to get into the trash room. I think I might have accidentally thrown my phone away. And I just want to have a look in the trash to see if I can find it. Now, this manager knew he was not allowed to let anybody who lived in the apartment complex go into that trash room on their own. It was a dangerous space. And so the manager was supposed to go in there with them if they needed to go in and look around in the trash. Hey, look at me. I'm glasses guy. I like feet. Why? 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 I guarantee they let a fully blind guy do it. Okay. 
But right when Roger went up to the manager's office, the manager was waiting for a very important phone call and so couldn't really leave his office. But the manager kind of empathized with Roger and felt bad for him and said, okay, you know what? I'll just give you the key. You can go in there on your own and go looking for your cell phone. He's I hope you find blind. it. And when you're done, just bring the key back here. And so Roger said, thank you oh! very much. He took the key. He left the office and he made his way down the hall. What an idiot. When he got there, he unlocked the lock and went inside. A few hours I later. Like, no, I don't, what do you mean? I don't like feet. Glasses guy does. Fuck, that's gross. Glasses guy likes feet. I, 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 no. Not Later, me. Roger's wife came home from work, and when she got to the apartment, Roger wasn't in there. She tried calling his cell phone, but he didn't pick up. And so she walked around the apartment, hoping there would be some indication of where he might have gone, like a letter or something, but there was nothing. And so Roger's wife was really concerned about this because this was totally out of character for her husband to go out at night on his own. And so she, operating on a gut instinct, called the police and reported him missing. And so a few minutes later, two police officers show up at this apartment building. They go up to Roger's apartment. They speak to Roger's wife. And then they go into the hall and they knock on some doors of other neighbors in the area. And after speaking we with go. them, one of the neighbors who had seen Roger earlier said, you know, hey, he lost his yeah, phone. Yeah, they better have sued. Spoke to him, he was going to go down to the trash room to try to see if he could find his phone down there. The blind so guy. The officers yeah. go down to the first floor. They go to the trash room and they try the door and it's unlocked. And when they open up the door, and they look inside right in the middle of this totally nondescript windowless room that basically looked like a basement was this huge green dumpster and above the green dumpster high up on the ceiling was this round opening and I don't like where this is going that was the bottom of the trash chute. So when people like Roger and the other people who lived in this apartment building dropped their trash down their respective trash chute on each floor, the trash would come tumbling down and literally fall out of the ceiling into the dumpster. Now, this dumpster was unique. It was not like other dumpsters where the top was just wide open and anyone could lob a bag of trash in. No, this dumpster, only the left side of the dumpster had an opening for trash. The rest of the dumpster was completely welded shut. There was no way into it. And so on the left side, where- No! No! Where this dumpster opened up to allow trash to come in, it was positioned right underneath that opening in the ceiling where the trash came tumbling down. And it wasn't just an opening, it was like this near vertical tunnel that was welded on to the top of this dumpster and it went straight up and it had this big open mouth at the top, almost like a funnel, and it was there to catch the trash as it fell down and it would go down this tunnel down into the dumpster. And so the gap between the ceiling and the top of this near vertical tunnel, the chute, was maybe three or four feet. And so when these officers looked into this room and they saw this dumpster and the chute and this hole in the ceiling, they also saw a ladder had been propped up on the... Literally the worst possible timing you could have had with that one. the left side of the dumpster right up against that near vertical tunnel as if someone was trying to look down into the dumpster itself. And so one of the officers walked over, they climbed up the ladder, and when they looked down into this tunnel, down into the dumpster, they found Roger. After a lengthy investigation, this is what is believed to have happened to him. After Roger got that key from the manager, he went to the trash room, he opened it up, and then he went inside and found this huge dumpster. And he would have quickly realized the only way to look into the dumpster and so to go- And that's what I mentioned, I get it. He's not like fully blind where he can't see anything. He's just like legally blind where like he just has really, really bad vision. Doesn't matter.
looking for his phone was to look down into this tunnel. There was a ladder nearby, so he grabbed it and he propped it up against the side of the dumpster and he climbed up on top and he looked down into the tunnel, down into the dumpster, and as he was looking, either some trash from the ceiling fell down and struck him, causing him to lose his balance, uh... or he just slipped somehow. But either way, he lost his balance and he tumbled into the tunnel, down into the dumpster. And what Roger didn't know is as soon as that happened, he was doomed. Because this was not some ordinary dumpster. This was a trash compactor. And as soon oh! as- Oh! That's so much worse! Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Uh, poor Roger! Oh my God! How did like I don't get it? How did the manager not just like get off his phone call and go check on the guy? Maybe he walked in and just assumed he left or something. What? I don't get it. Like, he didn't give the key to the manager. How? He didn't check? Yeah, screams? Nothing, dude? Nothing at all? As Roger fell down that tunnel, his body triggered an electronic sensor that activated the trash compactor. And so the way this worked is there was this big metal ram inside the dumpster. There's a ram on one side, and once it gets activated, it will press. There's a hydraulic press that pushes it all the way to the other side. So any of the trash in this dumpster will get compressed against the other side of the dumpster. And then at that point, the ram comes all the way back. And so every time trash would come down that chute, it would trigger that sensor, the trash compactor would start, it would flatten the trash, and so on and so forth. And so Roger has fallen down into the dumpster, he's triggered this compactor, but he's legally blind, he's probably dazed from the fall, and so by the time he realizes what's going on and he's kind of looking around, there is a hydraulic press bearing down on him. And so he probably tried to jump up the tunnel to try to escape the dumpster, but there was no ladder inside this tunnel and it was nearly vertical, so there was no way to climb up and out of it. And inside of the dumpster itself, there was no emergency shutoff switch oh. and there was no emergency exit. And so at some point, it's assumed that Roger realized he was not going to be able to climb up the tunnel. And so he only had one direction he could go, which was to retreat to the far side he got of pool the dumpster, German. as far oh away God. from the press as he possibly could be. But once he got over there, there was nowhere for him to go. And so he was forced to just wait as this hydraulic press slowly moved across until it finally reached him and crushed him. Now we don't know if that very first hydraulic press actually killed Roger. All we know is Roger was trapped inside of this dumpster for several hours. And over that period of time, more and more trash was dropped down the chute activating oh the press over God. and over and over again. And so by the time the police actually looked down into the dumpster, they saw a part of Roger's body and immediately they could tell there was nothing they could do. Roger was definitely deceased. Roger's wife would sue the manager of the apartment Good. building as well as the company that owned the apartment building. Sue for the their neighbor too. But the outcomes of that case have not been made public. So that's going to do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, there, uh, I mean, there isn't supposed to be a way in, right? So why design a way? I mean, to be fair, it is kind of like, why would he get a ladder and try to like lean in to grab it? You know, like it's just a phone. But at the same time, it's an old man who's like legally blind, you know? I don't know. Like they're so, uh, yeah, screw that manager, dude. Fuck that manager. Giving an old man the keys to a really dangerous trash area. Yeah, that's smart. Now it's time to walk away I hope you enjoyed your stay Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way You know I will miss you I hope you return Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.